The intent of this video is to discuss the B17's intercom interphone system. The interphone system provided a means for communications between crew members. Let's start with the bomber crew's communications gear. The crew members' communications gear changed throughout the war, but typically consisted of an A11 leather helmet with an integrated headset, a T30 throat microphone, and for most crew members, an SW141 push-to-talk microphone switch. The push-to-talk microphone switch was attached via a lanyard strung around the crew member's neck. This view exposes the A11 leather helmet under the flak helmet and the throat microphone. This display represents the bomber's intercom communication system. The headset and throat microphone both were plugged into a crew station interphone jack box. There were 11 of these jack boxes located on the B-17. The T-30 throat microphone can be seen here in action. The B-17 pilots activated their throat microphones by a thumb switch on top of the control columns. The ball turret gunner activated his throat microphone by pushing on the comm switch with the ball of his right foot. The top turret gunner activated his throat microphone by a thumb switch on his turret controller, shown here and here. The rest of the crew activated their throat microphones by the push-to-talk switch attached by a lanyard around their necks. There were five switch positions on the interphone jack box. The first position is the compass radio receiver. This position has no transmission capability. The second position is for transmitting and receiving over the liaison set for long range communications. The third position is for transmitting and receiving over the command set for short range communications. The fourth position provides an inner communication system between crew members. Crew members were usually monitoring this position. The fifth position on the jack box enables a user to override reception on all other jack box stations. Seven of the 11 B-17 interphone locations are identified on this graphic. Communication chatter was kept to a minimum during a mission. Gunners continually scanned the sky looking for interceptors. If an interceptor was spotted, then the gunner would alert the rest of the crew by identifying the plane as either a bogey or bandit, how many, approximate range, and the location relative to the bomber. If the interceptor is not known to be a friendly or hostile, it will be identified as a bogey. If the interceptor is recognized to be an enemy, then it will be identified as a bandit. The gunner will estimate the interceptor's range by referencing the fighter's wingspan to the gun's ring sight. The gunners called out the fighter's position based on the hands of a clock and if the interceptor was high, level, or low relative to the bomber. The gunner would yell out incoming only if the fighter started its attack pursuit curve. Here we can see the location of three fighters relative to a B-17. 11 o'clock high, 3 o'clock level, and 7 o'clock low. The gunners were trained to open fire at an effective range of 600 yards or closer. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.